Okay, let's do some crazy looking integral for fun. This is the integral from 0 to pi of 1 over parentheses with 4 minus cosine x inside and a square. And here is a little hint, which is the video that I did previously. When we have this, we do know the answer is pi over square root of a squared minus 1. So, is there any connection that you can make to use this to help us to get that? But anyway, please pause the video and try this first. Okay, let's go over this together. Huh, the problem is that this right here in the denominator is to the second power. This is only to the first power. Of course, we cannot just multiply you know, this with a minus cosine x on the bottom and on the top. That doesn't really help because that messes up that one on the top. Ah, I don't think algebra itself will do the work. But when calculus, so we have to think calculus as well. When we have this right here, how can I produce the denominator to become the square? Well, if you think calculus, how about let's talk about differentiation. Because if you differentiate 1 over x, you get what? You get negative 1 over x squared, isn't it? So that's how we are going to approach it. But this is why you have to be careful as well. A right here is like a parameter, it's like a variable. So here's the deal. I will be differentiating this right here with respect to a. And a is the number that you choose later on. You know a is about to be 4, but let's worry about that later. Let's focus on the differentiation. So here we go. Starting from what we know, which is the integral from 0 to pi of 1 over a minus cosine x dx. And this right here turns out to be pi over that. But for simplicity purpose, I will write the square root as negative one half power, so you can easily take the derivative. So that's pi times a squared minus one raised to the negative one half power. And now, here's the deal. I will be differentiating both sides with respect to a, as I discussed it earlier with you guys, like that. But here's the deal. When you differentiate an integral, you have to use the Leibniz rule. It's actually not that bad. You pretty much bring this in and change that to partial derivative. Because inside of this integral, you technically have two variables, namely a and x. You have to know what you are differentiating with respect to. So, if you would like, you can write it down again. Well, just do it for you guys. This is the same as saying integral of zero from 0 to pi. Bring this in, you are talking about the partial derivative with respect to a of 1 over a minus cosine x, and I will write this as a minus cosine x raised to the negative 1 power. So we look at this expression, and then the dx is at the end right here chilling. And on the right-hand side, I will just you know, write it down again just to uh, get ready. So dda of... This is just pi. Pi is a constant, so you don't have to worry about that. And this is, of course, a squared minus 1 raised to the negative 1 half power, like this. Now, we are ready. On the left-hand side, we get the integral from 0 to pi. That's still the integral. Right here to differentiate, of course, you bring this to the front, and then you minus 1 to the power. And you see that this is going to be negative, okay? And then we have the denominator, because minus 1, minus 1, you get negative 2. You bring that down to the denominator, and you get a minus cosine x raised to the positive 2 power in the denominator. And don't forget to use the chain rule, because you have to. The derivative of the inside is technically just 1. So if you forget, it's fine, you're lucky. But the derivative of this, with respect to a, is just 1. So you have a 1 on the top. And then you still have the dx. Aha! Isn't this what we want? Aha! Right? But anyway, let's see. Because if you messed up the derivative right here, you're still messed up. So don't, you know, don't, uh, yeah. so you just have to focus. Don't, 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 uh, don't be happy too early. Anyway, here right here, we're just going to take this to the front, maybe right here, and then minus 1. And now let's see. We will have negative 1 half, and then of course the pi is still pi. And this time we have the a squared minus 1. If you do your little uh, things, you get negative 3 half. And now, if you forget the chain rule, you are going to be in trouble because when you multiply, the derivative of this is 2a. And 
On the right hand side, it's easy because you can just cancel out the two. That's good. And in fact, we have negative on both sides. So if you like, you can cancel this out. And all I need to do now, because you see, we pretty much have the same form, except for A has to be 4. So I will just say plug in A equals to 4. That's it, right? Plug in A equals to uh, 4. So right here, you see integral from 0 to pi of 1 over 4 minus cosine x and then square and then the dx. Once again, I divided by negative on both sides already. So right here, we get positive. We get pi or pi times. And perhaps I will just write everything as a fraction like this. So I have pi on the top, a on the top. a is 4, so I have 4 pi like that over, bring this down to the denominator. Depends if you like radical or rational exponent, up to you. I like radical, so I just put the square root. And a is 4. This is going to give me 16 and then minus 1, which is 15. So we have square root of 15 inside, but raised to the third power like that. I don't know how I want to feel about rationalize the denominator here. So it's like up to you. Uh, yeah, let's see, this is 3 times 5 to a third power, third power. So if you really want, well, actually, you don't have to do that. Why? No, I'm sorry. This right here should be just 4 pi over, take the 15 out, and then square root of, of another 15. Yeah. It's in calculus already. Well, those now, so you can have the square root in the denominator. This is not that bad at all. And that's it.